Hey guys, Charms the Gamer here, and in the words of my buddy Adam Blompier, what the hell just happened? TLC, man, oh man, what a show it was. It was absolutely insane. A lot of shocks, a lot of surprises. Great show as always, but let's run it down. Um, Bray and Randy defeating Heath and Rhino for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Kind of saw that coming, I mean... Heath and Rhino were basically the Cinderella Tag Team Champions, and they had a good run. I think it was like 80-something days. Same amount as, as, um, as Becky's run, but that's the point. I mean, they had a great run, but you had to figure somebody would dethrone them, and who better than this quote-unquote new Wyatt family, right? But anyways, I mean, it only was about five minutes, so it, it was a little short in my opinion, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, right? But in any case, I mean... He's had a good run, and you gotta figure they'll be a good heel tandem to reign with the titles. I don't know exactly how long their reign will be. It might just be a stop gapper to get American Alpha the belt, which would actually make look which would actually make Bray look kinda cheap, but that's beside the point. But anyways, it was it was a result most people were expecting. I personally in my prediction videos actually went five and zero in terms of what I thought would happen and what I was hoping it would happen, I went three and two. But anyways, Enough about the first match. Let's move on. Second match on the card was the was the oh god, I feel sick. I feel sick talking about this. I feel like I'm gonna throw up a little bit in my mouth. Ugh. Nikki Bella. God, I feel sick just saying this. Nikki beating Carmella in a no disqualification match. Whoa, excuse me. Well, I feel like I'm gonna need to barf. Anyway, um. At the end of the match, it was actually revealed by Carmella that she wasn't the one that um, that took out Nikki to to um, prevent her from being at Survivor Series. It was actually Natalya, and what I'm feeling is that uh, based on that, I feel that they should have had Natalya interfere in the match and cost Nikki and give Carmella, I'll be, I'll be a tainted victory over Nikki because. Let's face it, you got the younger star in Carmella. She needs a key win. You know, a key signature win because basically since she's come over from um, from NXT as part of the video draft, she really hasn't done anything. And she could use some kind of signature win at this point. Whereas Nikki has all sorts of accolades to her name. Most of them, in my opinion, aren't deserved. But that's beside the point. So, I mean, you know, I would have given Carmella the win here, not in clean fashion, because I don't want to hurt Nikki's credibility too much, but I personally would have given Carmella a tainted victory, that way, you know, Nikki can move on to, um, work with, work with Natty in a feud, maybe, maybe Carmella goes off to feud with, like, Naomi or something, like, uh, you know, because Carmella is still technically a heel, I personally think she would be better off as a babyface, but she has come into her own on the mic as a scathing self-entitled heel, in my opinion. I mean, she has come into her own. I know I just said that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to compose all my thoughts here because I'm, I'm still freaking reeling from this pay-per-view. And what's funny is I actually had finished this, but I accidentally hit the... I accidentally didn't save this. I accidentally hit the cancel button instead of save. So my original 14 or 16-minute dialogue about this was actually lost. So I'm having to re-record this. But anyway... I personally would have had Carmella go over for that reason because, you know, she needs a signature win to be taken more seriously in the eyes of the fans. But, you know, it is what it is. They're obviously riding Nikki's rear end for God knows what reason. I don't know. I would have had Carmella go over, but that, that's just my personal bias against Nikki, again speaking. But that's just me anyway. And now we get to the match that really freaking grinds my gears. But anyway... More on the Nikki and uh, Mella thing. Obviously, I don't think this is quite over yet because, let's face it, you know, no disqualification. Mella could have an argument that, you know, Nikki only won because she blinded her with a fire extinguisher because she did actually use a fire extinguisher in the match. She actually sprayed it at Mella and everything. If she could say, oh, I only lost because I got blinded by a fire extinguisher, that mat that part of the uh, match shouldn't have been allowed, you know, everything but a fire extinguisher should have been legal or some heel BS like that. But anyway. I would have had Mella get a tainted victory for that reason, so she can get a signature win. Nikki can then go on a feud with Natalya or something, and whatever. Anyway, now let's move on to the match that really 
got me ticked off. I mean, you... Okay, let me let me set the stage here. You got Dolph Ziggler and The Miz in their final chapter, so to speak, in a ladder match. You know, these two are absolutely tearing it up. Great match and everything. And then here comes the ending that they book. You know, both men are climbing the ladder. You know, Miz and Ziggler, they're both fucking exhausted and everything. And what they decide to have Miz do to retain the championship because he did win. They have him decide to, they decide to have Miz, instead of doing something cool, like a move off the ladder, like a suplex or a side slam or something real cool off the ladder, that would really make him a decisive winner. They have him, they decide to have Miz kick Ziggler below the belt, not once, but twice, aka hit him with a low blow, twice. And he just pulls down the championship like that after two low blows, it's like... Huh? You have a rivalry like that. You put so much stock into it. You have that absolute freaking classic on No Mercy. And you have Miz win with two low lows after all that passion and fire they displayed at No Mercy. You have them. You have Miz win this with two low lows. It's just like. What? You end it that way because what why would you do that i mean okay i get it i can hear you guys typing in the comments right now this is a heel he's supposed to do things like that and i get it he is a heel right that that is totally true he's a heel and everything i do get that the problem is when you're having a rivalry that has so much chemistry like that it shouldn't go down that way the winner should be the better man you know, and should be um, finishing it with a move that, you know, makes sure the guy can't get up, but at the same time, it doesn't make make you look like a weak little bitch that had to take a coward's route out to win the damn thing. If it were me, and I had and I was booking Miz to win, I wouldn't have him hit two low blows to win. Mm -mm. I'd have him hit some kind of crazy ladder move. Like, you know, side slam or a full Nelson slam or something. Obviously not anything too crazy like a tombstone pile driver off a ladder. That would fucking kill somebody. But in any case, like I said, you have a great match like that going on. And you have it end because Miz hit Ziggler with two low blows. And he just gets the win and retains the championship like that. It's like, what the hell are you people thinking? As you can see, CM Punk in Punk We Trust t-shirt. It's a great one. Y'all can see that. In Punk We Trust. <laughs> but anyway, beside the point, besides my fashion choices, it just, you have all that energy. You have all that fuel. And you, sorry, I was looking away at the other computer. And you um, just squander it like that. It just makes no sense in the way of a, um, it makes no sense in terms of uh, fan booking, in term at least in my eyes, anyway. But whatever. It is what it is. They can go on and do that. But I personally think they just wasted a great feud with a lackluster ending, personally. Okay. And now, on to the match that I... W on to this, this next match, I really didn't give a damn for. Baron Corbin and Kalisto. Everybody and his mother knew that Corbin would win. Hell, I predicted it in my prediction video that uh, Corbin would win unless Kalisto pulled out something crazy like a saluted a soul into a chair or something but you know the little guy hung around he he hung in there as best he could but we all knew that Corbin would win I mean finish went that you know Kalisto was on the top rope he, he jumped off and all of a sudden Corbin beats him bang right in the face with a chair and then just dead insult to injury end of days onto a pile of probably like 12 or 13 chairs, and Kalisto was freaking out cold after that. So, for what it was, I mean, it was a, uh, it was a 12-minute match, and it was, it was pretty even. I wouldn't say it was a squash, but, I mean, nobody really thought Kalisto would win. Hell, I didn't even think Kalisto would win, and I'm a fan of his, plus I'm an eternal optimist for the little guy. I feel he deserves more than what he's getting. I mean, he had two reigns as United States Champion. The first one, he didn't even hold it more than a day. And the second one, they basically made him an afterthought until Rusev practically choked his lights out with the accolade. So, he deserves more than what he's getting up there. And I feel he should be 
better booked. I mean, maybe you move him to the Cruiserweight division, back over on Raw, reunited with Sin Cara. Maybe have him chase the tag titles once the New Day is finally done with him. I don't know at this point, but what's the point of having him getting steamrolled by Baron Corbin, who, aside from his whole lone wolf, I, I do what I want to, you know, prove that I'm the top guy that I belong in the main event. What substance is there to Baron Corbin? I don't really see much substance in the guy. But anyway, enough about that. I mean, everybody and their mother could see that Kalisto was going to lose. I mean, that was the most telegraphed match on the freaking card. Alright, and now the match that I personally had all my heart and soul in. My girl, Alexa Bliss, against the Irish lash kicker, Becky Lynch, in a tables match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And like, like I showed in my simulation, there was a couple of close spots where it looked like either woman was going through a table. And every time those spots went off, I swear, my heart skipped a few dozen beats. I was like, oh shit, is this going to be the way, is this how it's going to end? And, you know, they kept trading spots back and forth. There was, there was one spot where, where Lexi actually started biting Becky's hand. I'm like, jeez, Lexi, when did you turn into a cannibal? <laughs> so... It was quite an enjoyable match, and at the end of the match, they were both outside the ring, and Lexi had, she lifted Becky up and hit a power bomb and drove Becky through the table, and then the bar rang, and they were like, and I was like, oh my god, she did it, Lexi champion, my sweet little, my sweet little glitter, blah, 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 blah. I can talk today, my sweet little glitter child is champion, she did it. And you, you could see from the emotion on Lexi's face when she won, she was absolutely overcome with emotion. I mean, uh, uh, Becky, of course, had a post-match interview, and she was selling things like, she, you know, she was disappointed in herself. She felt like she let herself down. But if you guys haven't seen it yet, if you haven't seen Alexa's Talking Smack interview after TLC, you guys really ought to check it out on the WWE Network. Cheap plug here. Because she was an absolute master at making herself look like, you know, oh, she's so sweet and humble. She's crying tears of joy, talking about how happy she is that her parents were there to see her win the championship in her first major singles match. Because, you know, her first major one would have been at no mercy, but Becky wasn't able to compete. So, And then, as soon as Renee mentions Becky, she turns it on a dime and becomes the cocky, arrogant brat we all know and love. So, I mean... Lexi, you deserve this more than anything, sweetie, and I hope you have a long and prosperous reign, and please, for the love of God, incoming bias, by the way, for the love of God, whoever takes the championship, if it's another face, please, for the love of God, don't be Nikki Bella, anyone but her, she's had way too much already, at this point, give the belt to someone who hasn't had any kind of championship exposure that could use it, I mean, Nikki's ruled the roost since 2013, for God's sakes. 2013, 2014, who, whoever's counting. But, I mean, you should give it to someone that has another chance. I mean, hell, I take Naomi over Nikki at this point, and I don't really even like Naomi that much. So, I mean, but anyway, Becky had a great run, 84 solid days champ. Sure, he only had one successful defense, and that was mired in controversy, but it's beside the point, sweetie. You were a great first champion, and I'm not too worried about your future. I know you're going to get more title reigns because you're one of the most talented female wrestlers they have. And way to show that, you know, not just the men can go through tables and, and make brutal match types like the tables match look look good. You two ladies went out and killed it out there, and I'm, I'm so proud of you both. But, Lexi, you were my girl in that match, and you always will be. Congrats to you, Lexi. I'm so proud of you. Even if you are a spiteful little brat on camera, although off camera, because I have told you, I do actually have connections to WWE wrestlers. Off camera, she is one of the sweetest people you ever talk to. And if you guys ever meet her at like one of those fan meet and greets, you'll see what I'm talking about. She's one of the sweetest ones out there. She's nothing like she is on screen. That's for damn sure. But anyway, it's like the you had a great. Um, you deserve this more than anybody right now. And I hope you have a long and prosperous reign. Just keep the damn belt away from Nikki Bella. That's all I ask for whoever dethrones her. But anyways, enough about Lexi. Congratulations once again, Tweety. But now, it's time to talk about the main event. And man, oh man, what a shock this was. Anyways, it was a 
Tables, letters, and chairs match for the WWE Championship. I'm not calling it the WWE World Championship because that's just too much of a goddamn mouthful. Anyways, Ambrose and Styles are literally tearing it up. I mean, Ambrose hit a diving elbow drop off a ladder through a table. I think Styles hit a Styles clash onto something. Can't exactly remember what. Because I, was, I wasn't really totally paying attention to the match. I mean, I was going back and forth between the match and a Skype conversation I had with one of my buddies. But <clears throat> and then so I rewatched the match. But from what I caught, it was a great match. A lot of good spots. But what sticks out in my mind was the ending. I mean, AJ Styles going up to retain the championship. And who comes out? Dean's buddy James Elser. Still with the neck brace he had... From Thursday because of the Super Styles Clash off the steel steps, which, like I said in my prediction video, was fucking gnarly. And Styles, he's just straight pissed about this. I mean, he just goes off on James, and it looks like he's going to do another Styles Clash off the steps. But Dean saved him with a clothesline, and then Dean's climbing the ladder. Looks like he's going to take the championship, and all of a sudden James, all of a sudden you see, J all of a sudden you see Dean get tipped over, and you figure, oh, it's AJ, and then the camera pans in, and it's. Ellsworth, he just sent he just sent Ambrose, his buddy, the one that basically secured him a SmackDown contract and a future WWE Championship shot, sent him crashing through two tables. AJ goes up and re retains the belt. <clears throat> now, at first when it happened, I was like, "What the fuck just happened?" I didn't know whether to be angry or what. But after hearing his talking smack interview, where he says that, "Oh." I just did that because, you know, I have AJ Styles' number, because I've beaten him three times. Not counting the fact that he had help from Ambrose all three of those times. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. And James James Wolf says he'll give Dean the first shot if he can beat Styles at a championship, which I highly doubt will happen. But in any case, great show. Hell of a shock. Shocking ending. I mean, nobody freaking saw Ellsworth interfering. At least I didn't. I mean, if you had told me Ellsworth would interfere on behalf of AJ Styles, I would have looked at you and said you were fucking nuts. So, great show. And, as always, Team Blue pulls out another A-plus effort. But, in terms of um, what I would think, in terms of getting the championship back to uh, the whole thing with Nikki and Alexa, I just think don't give Nikki the championship because, like, she's improved quite a bit. But, in terms of performance, I'd say she's about... B plus performer, but Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, they're A plus plus. So you can see why I feel Lexi deserves to have a long run. And if anyone should dethrone her, it probably should be Naomi. But in any case, great show by SmackDown. As always, they're proving that for right now, until Raw steps it up, they are the A show. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Can't wait for Raw. What I also can't wait for is SmackDown on Tuesday to hear what kind of sassy control Lexi will give the former champion Becky Lynch now that she's the champ. And what the heck kind of explanation James will have for him turning on his body. At least it appeared that way. But anyways, great show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hope you all enjoyed this video. And this is your boy from Charm City. Charm City, you're signing up. Remember, if you like the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to support me on the channel. And as always, keep it charming. Peace out, everybody. Hope I didn't ramble too much, but like I said, peace out.